<laughs> this is a test or a joke or <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. This is the set. Yes, it's the local uh, stable manifold, which is the set of points such that the flow of the, of the system that starts at the point when t goes to infinity goes to the fixed point. Okay, so this is something you already know, like this. Yes, and this is the fixed point. And the same for the set of points that the limit when t goes to minus infinity, okay, so in the past, goes to the fixed point. It means something, well, I don't like this. And we ask if this uh, sets exist, how regularity are, and so on, okay? So as I said uh, the day before, yesterday, by Harman theorem, we already know that this sets Exist and are the image for the conjugation of the stable linear sets and the unstable linear sets of the uh, linear system. Okay, so much linear work here, but you understand me, yes? So, they <clears throat> are image of a, S, and A, U, and these sets are nothing but, if you have this, uh, no, I have a problem. Okay, imagine that you have Y, this way, then this uh, matrix, in the Harman theorem is hyperbolic. So it has an unstable part, an unstable part. Okay. We can do some uh, trivial uh, linear change of variables to get this. Yeah. And then uh, in here, you have an invariant linear su superspace. Okay, and another one here. And this means that this is invariant and this is also invariant, linear. Yeah, linear is a set of uh, vectors. And the spectrum of the matrix restricted to this uh, linear set it's just uh, the spectrum of AS that is their eigenvalues with real part negative. And the same for the other part. Yes? So the spectrum of the differentiability restricted to S is contained in real of lambda negative. And the spectrum. Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the thing is that uh, we know that the invariant manifolds of the system is just the image of the topological uh, conjugacy uh, given by Harman theorem of these uh, linear sets. Yes, so it exists and has this structure, but we know more. We know <clears throat> we have more 
And what we have is the following result. Is that in this situation and with this notation, uh, imagine that you have uh, x in two coordinates, the corresponding part to the stable and the corresponding part to the unstable. So in some sense, you can say xs belongs. This is not true, I know, but something like. Yes, in fact, which is true is this. Yes, if you want. It's a system of coordinates. Yeah? And <clears throat> what you have is that this local manifold is the graph of a function which is uh, a function of the stable money, the stable uh, coordinate, yeah? And it is tangent to S at the point P. Okay, we know more, but, and the same, sorry, the same, it's a graph, sorry. Okay, then all of those part. So that means that if you have here a system, this is a S, sorry, and this is a, a U, yeah? So you have something like this for the unstable manifold. Oh, come on, it's a nap time. Uh, uh, this is the unstable, and then maybe you have something like this for the stable one. <laughs> we <are> start. <laughs> okay. Hmm? So we have more information, but we have more. The thing here is that these manifolds preserve the regularity of the system. So if our initial system is the air, then the manifolds, that means the functions that describe these manifolds are C, F. Okay? And this is more that, that we had with the Harman theorem that we only know that is a continuous function. Yeah? So it's there, C, R. And Analytic Okay. This is the uh, stable and unstable invariant manifold theorem. Okay. And this theorem allows us to compute these manifolds. So let me do an example, you yeah. uh, know, in here. So know that the important thing here is that these functions, phi, x, s, and the other one, are uh, something like, uh, imagine that the fixed point is at the origin. This is not uh, necessary, but imagine that this is at the origin. Yeah. So these uh, manifolds are something like uh, uh, it's, uh, you can do Taylor. Okay. And if you do Taylor, then you will have something like um, 
a linear part that you don't know, plus uh, order two, plus order three, and so on. Until your degree of differentiability allows you to make this, uh, this expansion. Okay? So, in the two dimensional case, it's uh, the, the, the easy one, and it's the one that uh, we are going to, to give an example. <laughs> um, let me think in this. Yes, this is an easy example. Yes, this um, the origin is a fixed point. The derivative, uh, the differential, sorry, at the origin is like this. It's, it's an easy case. It's also diagonalized and so on. Yes, and see that the stable superspace is nothing but the first canonical vector and the unstable is just the second one okay so thinking this this means the following you have in here in the y axis in the x axis sorry you have the stable yeah so here you have the stable yeah you know that you have this stable manifold that is something like this, you don't know if it's like this or like this, and you want to know, yes? So in here, what we have is that this stable manifold will be something like this, y as a function of x, yes? This is what the, the theorem say. And with respect to the unstable, the same, you have something here, that you don't know, maybe it's like this, maybe like this, you don't know, you want to know. So what we have is that the, <clears throat> sorry, an stable manifold is something like this, yeah? Of course, something tangent to this vector can or cannot be a function y in function of x, but always will be a function of uh, uh, y. Yes? So now we are going to compute at least the first 10. <clears throat> so, for instance, we did with this table. Yeah, because it's more natural maybe to have function of x. Yeah, so you want to uh, compute this. Of course, there is no choice, no hope to find exactly this phi. But you think, okay, it has to be something like uh, a one x plus a two x squared plus x three plus as I like, because say that the system, initial system is analytic, so this manifold is analytic, so you can encounter any coefficient here, yeah? And uh, impose the conditions, yes? The first condition, remember, is that the stable manifold has to, uh, um, sorry, the fixed point has to belong to the stable manifold, and this is okay because uh, we have no constant coefficient. But the second, is that has to be tangent to the stable, yes? So if this manifold is tangent to a S, that in this case is one zero, yeah? That means that this first coefficient is zero, yeah? Because the tangent 
the tangent to the curve this yeah is nothing but <clears throat> this at any point so you evaluate at x equal to zero then you get this a1 here yeah but a1 has to be zero because it has to be tangent to this stable set to this stable uh, superspace sorry so this means that a1 is zero So we skip and we write like this. What high order term? Okay, and then we impose the other condition that I never write, which is the I never write, I never wrote. I don't know. Uh, which is the um, this condition that I never uh, mentioned before, but by the definition you have it, and by the name also, because the name is invariant manifold. So usually, when in maths you have a name, is because it means something. Yeah. So these manifolds are invariant, of course. If you have a point, all the orbit in this point belongs to. The invariant manifold. So we need to impose that the graph, this graph here, this curve is invariant by the graph. Okay? So that means that if we think that this y here is not y, is y of t, and this x here is not x, is x of t, when we uh, take the derivative with respect to the t, then both are the same. Yeah. So now we impose the invariant condition. <clears throat> we impose the That means if you have x, uh, x zero, sorry, y zero, yes, point here, then y t is this if. Uh, Yes, this is the invariant condition. Okay. And this invariant condition is equivalent to derivative with respect to t. Okay. This is equivalent No, yes, no. Okay. But always thinking in that we are in the invariant manifold. So when we write this condition here, every time that appears y, we have to put phi of x because we are in the stable manifold. Yeah? Okay, so let me write this. In this case, yes, we have y uh, dot. Y dot is y plus x squared. Yeah, but we don't write y. We write phi of x, which is this one term. Plus something. Yeah? 
something that is further forward. And <clears throat> this has to be equal. Yeah, or if you want me, we compute both. Yes. Just tell me if, if uh, there is something that is not clear, no problem. Yeah. So we have here this, I write, this is A2 uh, x t square cube plus something. Yeah. And uh, we have to the derivative with respect to time of this. Yes. And this is two a two x x I will say x every time. X multiplied by x dot x dot. And x dot is y squared. But y squared is not y squared. Y squared is phi. So here we have yes. Agree with me? Plus three a three x square multiplied by x dot, x dot, which is the same. Okay, so we have two things here, this one and this one that are CR has to be equal. So two functions that are, have the same single, the same regularity are, are equal, has to have the same uh, Taylor um, series. Okay, so any term uh, x power, Two here has to be equal of the any term in here, and so on. So we, the only thing that we have to do is just to write the terms of uh, the same over order together, and then we will find an equation for these coefficients. <clears throat> okay, so we have this. Um, I forget one term here. Oh no, no, it's here, it's here, it's okay. So we have collecting terms. Plus this, yes. And then in the other part, we have this one, okay? This and this is x power two. No? This term here, I don't care because it's x power four. And here we have one x power five. We don't care. The same in here. See, we have this term, which is x power three, which is okay. But the other one is also x power uh, four and two, six. So we skip. So in here, what we have is this term and this other term. So that's it. Yeah. Here we have that order two terms implies this equation, which is an equation that can be solved, and a three equal to sorry, this, that implies that a three is zero. Well, it's a value. This implies <clears throat> a two, a two, sorry, and so 
the Marian manifold is something like this. Yeah, well, if you want to compute more terms, you can do it. No? Okay, at any order that you want. Okay, so yes. There is another uh, method that I only mentioned the name, but I don't. Uh, I don't do anything about it. That is the parameterization method. Okay, I only say the name just in case that you need uh, to compute good approximations of the uh, stable and unstable manifold, this method. Uh, works uh, really, really well uh, by computations. So it's really stable numerically. It's a really good method, okay? And the thing is that uh, just uh, compute the manifold, the, not uh, like a graph, but as, as a parameterization, as a, as a uh, parameterization, param, whatever, with a parameter, yes? That means, That is on something like this. Okay, some function of Q. It's just uh, if you have a, a curve, you can parameterize the curve by some parameter, or you can uh, try to look for uh, the curve as a graph. So it's the same. Yeah, and this works really well. Uh, it's uh, well post numerically. Okay, so uh, with respect to, this is with respect to the stable and unstable manifold. Just let me say some words about the center manifold with some uh, brief words. <clears throat> so now imagine that instead of having a uh, uh, hyperbolic equilibrium point, you have a equilibrium point that is not hyperbolic. So imagine that you have something like this. Okay. And think that the matrix, the linear part is having an unstable part, an unstable part, and which is called a central part. This is zero, 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 okay? That part corresponds exactly the same that we did before, this one and this one, but this one is the part that uh, has the, the non-hyperbolic eigenvalue. So uh, there is also a linear subspace, linear, Soup space such that when uh, you restrict your matrix to this linear surface, the spectrum is contained in real part of lambda equal to zero. Okay. So the thing is that. We have no way to define this uh, beautiful definition of every point that goes to the point, uh, to the fixed point and so on, but we can have uh, this definition here, which is strange, but it's a definition. So think if you have an invariant manifold that is tangent to the central superspace, yeah? So this is also a question that you can ask, okay? It's not a geometrical object, but it's a question that you can ask. Is there a manifold, an invariant manifold that is tangent to the, the center space? 
And the answer is that yes, is there. And uh, moreover, sometimes there is more than one. No? So, but, but at least you have one, always. Okay? So the thing is that there is also, which is called the center manifold, which is the fixed point belongs to this center manifold and it is tangent to uh, also has the same regularity, CR, but not in the analytic case, okay? If the system is analytic, this manifold usually is not analytic, yeah? It is CR, but not analytic, okay? And uh, moreover, in this uh, in this case, the stable and unstable manifold uh, are like this, are these ones unique, and these are not unique. Yes. So see that I say exist, not exist and is unique. Yeah. So it seems that to be a graph of some function is to be unique. Yeah. There is only one. Okay, so um, this is the, the, the existence result. And we have also a, a conjugacy result. Well, it's not exactly a conjugacy result. It's an equivalent uh, result. Let's say something like this. <clears throat> In this case, the system, the original system, is equivalent to the restricted dynamics to the uh, center manifold. Okay, don't care. I, I, I don't want to go into this, but the thing is that you can uh, have some equivalence that I explained now what means. It's not exactly a conjugacy, it's something like conjugacy, but not exactly. But the thing is that this system, uh, you can decompose the system in three parts. The center part, the unstable part, and the stable. Yeah, in some way, okay? I don't care now in this way, but just for information, you can uh, decompose the original system in the center variables, stable, unstable variables, and stable variables, okay? So see that, for instance, if you, we can do this and compute some coefficients of this new vector field and so on. And imagine that you have this part deleted, yeah? Then the study of the stability is easier because here we have more, uh, less dimensions, okay? So we have a system of N dimensions. We don't know if it's stable or not, the origin, because we have some again variables with real part equal to zero. We have this, so we compute some terms here in some way, and then we reduce our plot in, in, in n dimensions to another that has less dimensions. Yeah? This is the reduction to the center manifold. No? This is the reduction uh, method, if you want.
that consists in this. Yeah? So now trying to compute this vector field here. Okay, there are lots of uh, uh, ways to do it. Okay. Yes. Any question? If you want me, uh, you uh, write me an email and I give you a reference to with some examples of it. Or ask Marta. <laughs> Marta knows. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So. What about, uh, this is local, yeah? What about maps? So maps appear lots of, of time uh, this morning. So in maps we have a similar result. Just let me make some translations of the notions that uh, uh, Thomas uh, explained uh, this uh, morning. And what means the stable money for, for maps? And that's it. Yes, it's not uh, complicated, but uh, you need some uh, dictionary. <clears throat> well, in fact, we know more or less, because if you think that the map uh, is, a, is a flow with a discrete time, then it is clear what means the stable and the unstable money, yeah? So, but now thinking maps a little bit. In maps, if you have a map um, and you try to uh, understand the dynamics of this, yes, to have a point x0, x1, is f of x0 and so on of x1 that means f square of x0 f squares as uh, thomas uh, explained is f of f yeah and so on and then we ask what happened here yeah so uh, the fixed points are just the ones that stay, yes. And we also can think in this uh, hyperbolic structure or to be a stable or to be unstable and so on. But the only thing that you need to do is just exactly everything that we did the last two days with respect to hyperbolicity and definitions of stability and so on, change real lambda negative by modulus of lambda less than one. And real lambda positive by lambda, uh, modulus of lambda greater than one. It's, it, and everything works, yeah? So here we have, uh, hyperbolic if <clears throat> yeah. and I just I, I write something change because we are in between friends so we can say these things here change real of lambda negative by <clears throat> no? yes ah. <laughs> I was happy to have a question <laughs> okay so now we think in this um, stable and unstable uh, manifolds, yes? Uh. And the definition, the, the, the nice definition, the geometric definition are the points that belongs to some neighborhood of the 
fixed point such that the limit of n uh, sorry so the limit of the iterates of the point goes to the fixed point okay and this is always uh, <coughs> sorry an invariant manifold that we have if the map f is a diffeomorphism then we can have the unstable man yes so assume that f is a diffeomorphism that in particular implies that there exists this inverse and then we can define the unstable one. See that here we have this and this, yes? Okay? As before. That's exactly as before. Thinking the invariant condition in this case, yeah? To uh, try to look for the, uh, the graph. So we have exactly the same. I, th I think that now it's exactly this, uh, this theorem is exactly the same for maps. Yeah? So we have some now invariant cores or invariant surfaces or invariant manifolds such that every point there goes to the fixed point if you are in the stable manifold. Yeah. And you can compute the Taylor expansion of these uh, graphs of this function phi and phi bar as we did for flows. Yeah, but the invariant condition is a little bit different. So think in this. So think, think in, just imagine that you have a system like this. So imagine that you have the same. So this is a system. Uh, this is a map, sorry. Yes. This is a map. We have the same theorem. So we can compute the stable and unstable manifold. Now the exercise is just the thing. Uh. as we did for flow. Just the two first steps. Yes, and then you will see that you have to think in these invariance conditions and what means to be invariant and so on. Okay. So uh, just uh, I stop uh, now in a minute. Yeah, but I want to, to explain what we are going to do now. So now <clears throat> imagine that we have a map that as Jordi said and Thomas say, maps are much fun because we have more things there. So for planar vector fields, uh, we cannot have any chaotic zone and so on. Everything is really bit, uh, is, has more order, okay? So, but for, for planar maps, you have cows, if you want. So the thing is that it's a mechanism to have cows that is just globalized the stable money. And this, this the, and, and see what happened, yeah? And we will see. But the thing is that you have here some fixed point. Imagine that you have an stable manifold and an stable manifold. 
okay, locally. But if you have uh, this part here, and this is the stable manifold, and you take the inverse of this uh, segment here, you will have something like this, yes? Which also satisfies the same condition because I, when you take one iterate here, you go there and then you are in the local zone. Yes? And then another piece and so on. And the same for here, but uh, doing the same for the inverse. Yes? And we want to study this globalization, yeah? which is a really difficult problem in general, but for some cases, we can do some things. Okay, so, and have some implications. So this is what I want to do in the, my last hour, okay? Okay, so 10 minutes, yes, it's okay? Okay. Yes.